December 23, 2013, the 49ers hosted the Falcons. This was a much anticipated matchup of the previous no, 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 year's no, NFC no. Championship. But more importantly, it was the 49ers' final game ever at Candlestick Park. The Stick was one of America's most iconic stadiums, and it's where this franchise built their legacy. It was time to go out with a bang. Damn. I forgot Jackson's on the Falcons. Look at Patrick Willis. Patrick Willis had Navarro like Bowman. That this Brooks. game went back and forth. The 49ers Ultimately, linebackers the 49ers ridiculous. looked to have the edge late in the fourth. As long as they recovered this onside kick. They will go for the onside kick here. He goes down oh the my God, Bowman. Snelling. Was he able to stay in bounds? Yes, he did. <laughs> As the Falcons drew, how the f do the do the bro? All that talent y'all had on that defense, y'all ain't win that Super Bowl, man, bro. I rooted for the Ravens, but if I can go back, I I, I wish that the 49ers could have won that Super Bowl. Honestly, going back, I really wish they could have won that Super Bowl, bro. But eh, it is what it is. Closer and like, closer to the end zone, it looked like the final memory for Niners fans at the stick would be the football bouncing the team right that past for? Navarro Bowman. But instead, this is what happened. Pressure coming, Ryan gets rid of it for Douglas. Oh my goodness. And it's in the hands of Bowman, who's got all green grass. Navarro Bowman. Bruh. Gonna take the Niners This team was so talented, bro. Didn't Welcome back to 13. On, on, um, Let on me refresh your line? memory. Do you remember Tim Tebow on the Patriots? What Hell about no. Peyton Manning's legendary season? How many of you waited in line like me for the release of the PS4 yes, I do remember Tebow on there. and Next Gen Madden? Overall, the NFL in 2013 was a wild time. And in 2023, the season's already off to an epic start. You can Alden get tickets Smith, today. Yeah. No, but Alden Smith and then had Justin Smith too. They had two Smiths. Just watch your favorite teams, courtesy of SeatGeek. With over 20 what? There wasn't a ton of excitement at the time considering the lack of skill position players at the top of the draft. The most notable names in the first round to the average fan was wide receivers Tavon Austin, DeAndre Hopkins, and Cordero oh. Patterson, as well as Florida State quarterback EJ Manuel. And I don't, I, I never watched EJ Manuel in college. Was he really like that? And number two, going along with that last player I mentioned, compared to the 2012 quarterback class, 2013 was considerably weaker. After four, Brandon Wheaton, four guys went in the first round in 2012, EJ Manuel was the only quarterback drafted in the first round yeah, in 2013. Two, two, and there were only three quarterbacks total taken in the first three rounds. The most notable trades in the offseason included the Chiefs acquiring Alex Smith from the Niners. But there's no denying that Alex Smith has been a welcomed addition to the Kansas City Chiefs. The Seahawks received Percy Harvin from the Vikings. And Darrell Revis, who was the consensus number one corner in the league before getting injured in 2012, was sent by the Jets to the Buccaneers. As far as free agency, the biggest moves were Wes Welker leaving New England for Denver, I remember that. Elvis Doomerville going from the Broncos to the Ravens, and lastly, James Harrison had Doomerville moved from the Steelers so to their division rival, the Bengals. Now off the field, there were a few big moments that garnered media attention. Number one, the infamous tuck rule was finally abolished. It had come into rule in 1999 and cost the Raiders a chance at playing in the Super Bowl. Pieces. Number two, Eagles wide receiver Riley Cooper was caught on video. This was nuts. This, this guy video using a racial slur during a music concert and was briefly sent away from the team. Again, I'm, uh, I'm extremely sorry. Number three, there was a $765 million settlement proposal based around concussions announced in a class action lawsuit brought against the league by former players. They knew. Yo, I seen this. Um. I seen this tweet. Let me pull it up. They was like, I missed this version of football. And I didn't realize I don't miss that version of football until I seen that tweet. Now, I do think that the NFL today is, um, I miss it. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Like, my, I, like 95% of those hits in there, I don't. I don't miss that. But I do miss 
I do think they went a little too damn far, especially with like the hits to the head of the quarterback and all of that. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Because what game did I just watch where they got a rough in the passer call and it was not close. It was last year. It wasn't, I mean, last week, it was not close. It was so ass. Like, was that first the Steelers? I think I think it was a Steelers game. Like, come on, bro. Like the overprotecting of the quarterback, I don't like, bro. TT was running wild back then. Yeah, bro. Let me tell you what, bro. Chandler Jones. Oh my got this. I, I think he do. Not a doubt. That got that nigga had his shirt off eating cereal by the pool and tag LeBron. Why you tag LeBron in there? Then he was on there crying about Aaron Hernandez. Man, bro, no cap, bro. I'm hoping for the best for game, bro. I didn't even think, I, I didn't think that that would be him. Like, man, bro, that's unfortunate. Hey, we got it too. I don't want to W Bob. I don't want to diagnose anybody because I'm not a doctor. And you can't tell whoever got CT into the end. Um, but it ain't looking good is what I can say. About it. And they didn't tell us. You know, that's just like flat out lying to you. Number four, there was the release of Madden 25 and NCAA 14. Mm -hmm. NCAA 14 is a good game. It's also an overrated game at the same time. Yeah, I know I know what the response is gonna be like when I say that. How? Let me tell you what. The reason why people, um, the the reason why people treat this game and act like it was just such a perfect game is because it was the last one. It was the last one. I don't think NCAA fourteen was the greatest NCAA football game made. Like like my dog B Fly said, or uh, my dog Ty said, the P there's PS two versions of the NCAA football that are better games than this game. But it was the last one. It was the last one. So when games go away and they and it's the last version of that game, as long as you are a somewhat decent game, we gonna overhype you and we gonna be like, oh man, it was so good back then. Our nostalgia is gonna get stronger and stronger each year another uh, each year another NCAA season go by and there's not a new game. So it's a good game. I'm not saying it was bad. It's overrated though. Simply because it's the last one of its kind. And when the new NCAA games come out, this game will still hold that place because we went so long, we we had such a gap. And now the new games are gonna have to try to like um stack up with oh man, but NCAA 14 had this, had that. Like, even though those games might be superior games in a lot of ways. Um so why didn't they revamp the other shit? What do you mean revamp the other shit? The, the, I think they said the new NCAA football game is coming next year. I would bet money. Shador Sanders might be on the first cover of the new NCAA. If, if he continues to have a decent season and he comes back next year, he's on the next version of the game. Him, Travis Hunter, Caleb Williams. No, Caleb is going to the NFL this year, right? Or I, I think he said he might, he might, if he don't like the situation. If if Caleb, if Caleb stays, he's the, he's the next cover. But if not, it's Shador. It's Shador, bro. And also, also, you got to remember, now college athletes can be paid. They always will put a guy that just left on the cover. So, right, my dog Robinson had just left Michigan. So, since he's not in there, not in the NCAA, they can do it. But now with NIL, you can be the cover athlete now. You can be the cover athlete. So, um, but yeah, man, like, great game, but also overrated at the same time. Sadly, this was the... Give it to Bo Nix. Nah, I don't think Bo Nix is going to do that, bro. Unless Bo Nix have just a fucking magical season. Bo Nix, I don't want to say, how can I put this? He's not as much of a household name to the casual as I would think that they'll be looking for. Now, Bo Nix got a name, especially if you're a good college football fan, and also, especially after what he just did to uh, Colorado. But to the casual fan, uh, but to the casual fan, he's not as big of a name. The final year of the college football games release. 
A few months after Madden was released on PS3 and Xbox 360, the next generation of consoles dropped. The much anticipated release of the next version of Madden featured Adrian Peterson on the cover. The name Madden 25 was meant to celebrate the game's 25th anniversary, but it did leave this question. And for the last off the field moment that I'll mention, what was the game's 25th anniversary, but it did. What is Madden? That's a fact. Be dealing with that. What next? Did leave this question. And for the last off the field moment that I'll mention, Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez was charged with murder. Yep. The news of his arrest was much bigger than football, but for the sake of this video, the craziest shit I've ever fucking heard in my life, bro. Let me tell you what. I want to talk about the off the field shit. Because we seen it, heard it, went through it. Why did I not grab no water? I'm not going to make a run. I need water. Hold on. I'm done eating. But on the field, Aaron Hernandez, one of the best sightings I've ever seen. I swear to God. That nigga was nice. I'm not just saying that. That nigga was cold as fuck, bro. Him and Grunk, oh my God. That nigga was fast as fuck for a tight end. That nigga was so damn cold, bro. But yeah. I don't got no water, bro. Chat, give me, give me, give me legitimately like a minute. I'll be right back. I gotta run downstairs, get a water. Boom. We will keep focus on the NFL and use this moment to transition into preseason storylines. In what can be described as a media circus, the Aaron Hernandez news was the bomb that dropped on an already heavily covered training camp. Here's a brief rundown of the major stories. March 13th, the Patriots lost Wes Welker, who had made five Pro Bowls in a row to the Broncos. Why you call Why you saying fuck Wes Welker? West, we're gonna throw it every time. You don't have to block. Everything is on the table. June 10th, they brought in Tim Tebow, one of the most publicized players of that era. And just over two weeks later, Patriots released Hernandez after his arrest. When you heard about Aaron Hernandez, what, what you thought, what your reaction was? You seen it in Super Bowl? I can't remember. Uh, next question. Due to a combination of free agency, injuries, and off the field matters, the Patriots began camp without their top seven pass catchers from 2012. Now, other than the Patriots, here's the other big storylines prior to the 2013 regular season. Number two, the Denver Broncos shocked everybody after going a league best 13 and three in 2012. And after the signing of Wes Welker, the Broncos shot up to the best Super Bowl odds of any team in the league. It was clear that Manning was gonna do whatever it took to get over the hump. Man, bro, I wish Peyton Manning only retired with one ring, bro. I wish he retired with one ring, bro. He did not deserve that last ring, bro. RPDT too. Man, bro, Cam Newton and bro, they just ran into Von Miller in that fucking defense, bro. Wouldn't DeMarcus wear on that team? Because if he retired with one ring, that mean Cam Newton got one. I mean Cam Newton got one, bro. That's hate. Bro, Dolo, he was fucking trash that Super Bowl. That 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 playoff, he was shit. That nigga had a noodle arm. That defense was just God tier, bro. Moving on to number three, it was year two of the 2012 quarterbacks. Entering their second seasons, how would they fare? Care, Luck led one of the greatest turnarounds in NFL history right, in 2012. Luck downfield, touchdown! But could he clean up his high turnover numbers? RG3 was the rookie of the year, but after suffering a torn ACL in the team's final playoff game, could he bounce back from that serious injury? And for Russell Wilson, with an already dominant defense that got stronger in the offseason, as well as acquiring the high profile Percy Harvin. Percy. What was this team led by the Definitely one of my one of the best playmakers that I have gotten to watch. This nigga was a he's a problem. Straight problem, bro. This young quarterback going to look like in 2013. You're excited yesterday when they Oh yeah. That's that's a huge move. I mean, who, I mean it's even more huge from a Madden game. Roger Goodell lowering the boom on the New Orleans Saints and their bounty program. Goodell suspended Sean Payton, Please the head coach, for a thugs. full season. After Bountygate led Sean Payton to being suspended and out of the NFL for the 2012 season, he returned to the Saints' sideline. 
So how was this year off going to affect him? The day he was back in, in the start of April, it was, hey, we're, we're right back at it. And how was their new look defense no, 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 no. with Rob You Ryan want our players, there? you fucking thug. Number five, after 14 seasons, Andy Reid was out as the Eagles head coach and was now coaching the Chiefs. Kansas City had struggled much. Boy, they should have never let this nigga leave. They gave this nigga, they gave the wrong nigga a team with free reign. Now he sits and terrorizes the team with his damn toy quarterback that he lets do any and whatever thing. Any and whatever fucking thing. He got this little motherfucking badass kid from the sandbox that he just lets have free reign. <laughs> the terrorizing <laughs> Mightily in recent ah, years, and one oh of the first moves God, they made bro. after Reed was hired was the trade for former number one pick Alex Smith. Now, for the Eagles, their replacement for Andy Reed was the most sought after college coach in the country, the innovative Chip Kelly. Damn, this is a great picture. This is a great picture. Hit it. No, sorry. Look at him. Genuine joy. Genuine joy, man. Him. This nigga was a guy in college. With Mike Vick, LaShawn McCoy, and Deshaun Jackson, some of the shiftiest players in the game, and imagining them in Kelly's ain't just, ain't just when they got uh, was Vince incredibly Young's intriguing. Drink and many of us were eager to see how these changes would play out. And lastly, the reigning Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens <laughs> set out to defend their title, but with a drastically different look. Legends Ed Reed and Ray Lewis yeah, Ray were amongst right, yeah. eight defensive starters that were no longer on the roster. So how would the defending champs fare with all these defensive changes? Okay, next up, to give a little context to the state what about of all 32 Mark franchises, we will look at the projections of each conference by itself. Let's start with the NFC. On screen, we have how each team fared in 2012, how many wins they were projected to have in oh 2013, arm, and hurt. who was their starting quarterback or quarterbacks during the season. See, this is my era of football because I know every team's starting quarterback. I watch all their journey, nigga. I know all this shit, nigga. All this shit, bro. Like, bro, nigga, the Josh Freeman bucks. I remember hoping that Josh Freeman could be something, but he never really showed me, like, just he could take the next step. I remember Glenn from NC State, young quarterback, big arm. Showed a lot of promise in college. Thought that he could potentially be a first-round quarterback, but he is a turnover machine. Then all of a sudden, I remember they benched Freeman, brought Glenn ass in the game. Glenn wasn't no goddamn good for real. Wasn't no goddamn good for real. Christian Ponder. I remember Christian Ponder, bro. Um, Absolutely, bro. I remember Um, also they had a backup quarterback. What, what's that black backup quarterback that they had? He used to play receiver, but he played quarterback. He started a playoff game versus Green Bay. He was fucking God the fuck awful. Um... But um, as far as Christian Ponder, Christian Ponder would uh, he would stay. He would often be hurt. He he watching him. He never he never blew me away. Joe Webb, Joe motherfucking Webb, bro. Dog, this is the bro. This is the golden era of football for me. The golden era of football for me, man. This shit NFL was like crack, nigga. Every Sunday and every Monday, I need it. I need it, nigga. Let's go. The Western Division was a juggernaut with their top two teams, the Seahawks and the Niners, who each possessed young quarterbacks and elite defenses. Both of these teams were seen as oh, Super Bowl hey, contenders. Going up north, it was the Packers' division to lose. And in the south, the Falcons, who had gone 13-3 in 2012, were looking to maintain control over the Saints, who had gotten their head coach Sean Payton? But the thing back. about the, the, then lastly, the thing about the me as well with the a, NFL, I'm starting to get back there now. I'm starting to get back there now because I took I, I realistically stopped watching NFL for like four or five years. Um, it's like four or five years, right? So, well, no, nah, maybe not four or five. Let's, I'm lying. Maybe like realistically, maybe maybe three, three years. I was like, I'm done, bro. I'm out of here, bro. I'm done. Um. Especially after what Bill O'Brien did to the Texans, yo, he ruined me. He he took everything I had from me, bro. Like I couldn't watch it. I was done. <laughs> but but with that being said, man, I'm back, bro. I'm all the way in. I'm learning the players that I need to learn. Um, and it's not taking too long neither. And plus, it it, it helps that I got a team to root for. Like nigga, like CJ Stroud looks fucking crazy. Like he looks hype. Right. So yeah, a complete toss up. 
No single team looked spectacular or terrible on paper. Now switching conferences to the AFC, out west, the Broncos looked like the strongest oh team. Oh my God, Terrell Pryor, nigga. That's my guy. That's my guy. I remember he was having a couple of decent games for the Raiders, especially when they started to let him run. But then I think he got hurt and it was over. It was over. And also, he was never really a good NFL quarterback. He was never really a good NFL quarterback. Let's keep it on it. Let's keep it honest. He was fast as a bitch, though. Oh, my goodness, bro. That read option. Yes, nigga. Bro, it was giving niggas smoke, bro. Um, as far as this division, man, Alex Smith, his first couple of years, Captain check down. Uh, Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers, he, he always going to be do Phillip, Rivers, do Phillip River things. He going to make sure that they not too ass, but they be they don't really not going to win shit. By far, after acquiring Wes Welker, in the North, it was going to be a dogfight, minus the dogs themselves. Down Brandon south, Wheaton and Houston, Jason Campbell, oh my God. Houston with Matt Schaub, we're looking- <laughs> Twelve and four. I'm not gonna be okay. Twelve and four, man. The only team that we realistically had to worry about was two and fourteen. Stop! Stop, Jay Woods. The only thing that we had to worry about this year for real was Andrew Luck in his miraculous Colts. Jake Locker was garbage. He sold himself coming back to Washington one more year. If he went out a year earlier, Jake Locker would have screwed over another franchise. Whoever had the, who, let me see, what, what draft was that? 2011 was when he was drafted. Oh, nah, 2010, he wouldn't have been drafted because it was Sam Bradford. 2010 NFL draft. Sam Bradford was drafted number one in 10, ain't he? Yeah. Let me tell you what. If he didn't, if he wouldn't fucked over the Rams, he would have fucked over the Lions. No, no, the Lions had um Stafford still, right? No, so it wouldn't have been the Lions. He might have fucked over the Buccaneers. He wouldn't have been, well, this is before Robert Griffin. He probably would have fucked over the Redskins. And then Robert Griffin probably would have been on a better team. Jake Locker, you fuck, you're Robert Griffin's canon event, bro. You're Robert Griffin's canon event. If you would have came out early, you would have been a fucking redskin, and Robert Griffin would have went somewhere else where he would have had a longer career. You motherfucker. But yeah, man, um, Jake Locker was not no motherfucking good. He was ass. Also, he didn't really have no crazy receiving. No, he yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, the Jaguar was just awful. Blaine Gabbert is one of the most timid first round quarterbacks I ever seen in my life. When he came in the game, he was behind a bad offensive line. But he was too scared. He wouldn't stand in the pocket. Whenever somebody was near, he would just run. Please, I'm sorry, Mike. Blaine Gabbert was so fucking afraid of pressure. He was garbage, bro. Garbage. And they was trying to hype him up to be better than Cam Newton. Are you fucking insane? Looking to take the division once again, but the Colts with luck in his second year were with? on the rise. And finally, as close as it gets to a guarantee in the NFL, the Patriots were heavy favorites to win the East yet again. Even with Okay, so you got Ryan Tannehill. Um, this is Ryan's second season, right? Ryan, his first year with the Dolphins, niggas was like kind of iffy on him. Because you got to remember, Ryan was just playing fucking receiver three years before this. You hear me? He was a college receiver, okay? <laughs> niggas, a lot of niggas forgot about that. This nigga, he only played quarterback because um, Texas A&M quarterback got hurt and they needed him. And they needed him. And he came and he showed a whole lot of talent. So, but then I think the second year he, he did his thing, EJ Emanuel, I knew this guy was fucking ass when I first seen him. I was like, yo, I'm not lying. I don't like this fucking guy. And Geno Smith, I thought Geno was a college fucking bust. I'm like, yo, listen, he, I, ain't, I ain't fucking with Geno. Like, this, not, this, ain't, this ain't no motherfucking good. Um, but 
Also, now looking back at it, I think Gino has just got fucked over by being on a garbage ass team. Simple and motherfucking plain. So this this is what often happens, bro. Chat, a lot of the niggas that we consider bust, they are bust because of the situation that they're in, too. It happens more, it's happened more than we would like to admit. It happened more than we like to admit, bro. Nah, I man, I ain't gonna lie. Rex Ryan, Rex Ryan wasn't really trying to coach Gino up like that. Now Gino was doo-doo. Gino was doo-doo, but Rex wasn't trying to coach Gino up like that, bro. Look at Rex. I mean, look at Gino now. Gino is an okay quarterback. Over here, he looked garbage. He looked like he didn't belong in the league. Oh, didn't he punch somebody? With all their offseason drama. Oh, yeah, no, nah, I ain't gonna lie. Gino was tripping. Yeah, Gino was tripping. As for Tim Tebow, they did release him during Final Cuts, which led him to beginning his broadcasting career a few months. Oh, he got punched. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was tripping. Later, entering the regular season, here was the NFL top 10 players What's according to other players. And also, here's what the average first round draft looked like in fantasy football. Aaron Foster, you had to get him. You had to get him. Jamal Charles, Doug Martin, the fucking muscle mouse. Let's do it, call that nigga, bro. Dog, this motherfucker was toting the ball, bro. CJ Spiller, I was never really a CJ Spiller fan, even though he was so fucking fast, bro. Um, Nigga, this is, this is amazing football. You got Ray Rice, who was a dog. Um, Marshawn Lynch, Shady McCoy, Trent Richardson. Oh, my God. Womp, womp. Garbage. Um, Alpha Morris, nice pickup in the draft for them. And fucking Matt Forte. All running backs except Calvin Johnson. Except Calvin. Look at Calvin. All right. So, according to this list, this was the best players. Aiden too fucking high. Get out of here. All right. You got AP. I understand AP being number one. That nigga was fucking ridiculous, bro. Um, Tom being at four is fucking surprising to me. But um, Calvin Johnson, without a doubt, the best receiver in the game. J.J. Watt, without a doubt, the best defensive player in the game. Aaron Rodgers up there. Alden Smith, one of the biggest what-the-fuck moments I've ever seen in my life, bro. This nigga was up. Listen, he's a, he was above Von Miller. And when I say that to people that didn't watch the league, people will be like, nah, that's not true. That was never true. No, he was. Because he started off faster than Von Miller. Same draft class. But that don't mean that he was a better player. He, he just, he balled more than the nigga Von. That nigga was a problem, bro. But couldn't get out of his own fucking way, bro. Man, bro, that nigga, well, he couldn't get out of his own fucking way, bro. Um... Why is 2K on sale? What you mean, 2K24? That game on sale? Excuse me? And then Patrick Willis. That's fucking crazy. Patrick Willis. Man, this is one of my favorite linebackers, too. I was, I was sad his screw was cut short because of his feet, I believe. 15% off. Ball. Whatever, we got the game. It, it, it is what it is. Tolzien, Scott Tolzien, That bro. run in week 12 by Scott Tolzien was pretty much the only highlight Scott of his Tolzien. career. He was even benched later in that very game. But anyways, going to the beginning of the 2013 regular season, things got off to a record-breaking start right away in Denver. And airing it out, and his fingers attached. Jay Woods, is this the year that Matt Shaw went to shit, bro? It's a trade that Jim Ursay is mentioning on Twitter. You may not believe this. The fleece of the century. But Trent Richardson has been traded to the Indianapolis Colts. For no season. The fleece of the century. Smith hit as he throws. The Wayne Ball. See, look, bro, this is the thing. It be receivers in certain areas, like, they'll never get their credit. But they were some fucking dogs. Nigga, the Wayne Ball was a hype. Dwayne Bow is a height, nigga. What a wild story. What began as a common ingrow toenail turned into a nightmarish case of MRSA. And this morning, Tynes fully blamed the Bucks for the infection and even claims the team tried to hide it. In week six, three Tampa Bay Bucks players were diagnosed with a potentially deadly strain of staph. 
The NFL nearly canceled their home game that week because of it. The following week, the Falcons even took Yo, the step Wayne of bringing Bo a rapper now. Oh my god. This was four years ago. Did this. Please no. You think, you, you think you're not gonna respect the bow, nigga? Are you crazy? Oh, Yachty dropped some new shit? Oh my god. Why they ain't fade my nigga back in his head? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Look at this right here. Oh my god, that's money bow. That's money bow. Oh my god, money that's money bow. Like that? This car is sick. Man, them chains is dripping, bro. I hey, appreciate it, y'all. Y'all the y'all the youth, man. Y'all the kings. I want y'all to take this money. Go put some money on your mama table. Do good in school. Anything you want to do. My man ain't getting none of that money. Football, just know you can do it, because I did that. Because I did that, nigga. Yeah. Bust down. Did that. Be watch. Did that. Iced out. Did that. Drop top. Did that. Hollywood. Did that. Miami. Did that. New York. Did that. Trying to figure out what I ain't did shit. Did that, me and I was spent that, trying to figure out what I ain't did yet. Perfect flight, flew that, Miami, where I live at. Mess on the water while I still at. Bo Allen, why you playing big tech? Two letters, double R, really rich. See the star, diamond sign. Damn, Bo, this shit hard. I need the whole project. You killing these dudes. <laughs> Niggas really be lying to us, man. My shorty say, love this song. That gotta go, bro a hazardous material screw to disinfect the visitor's locker room after the Bucks visited Atlanta in week seven. New developments in another big story in professional football, accusations that a Miami Dolphins player quit because he was bullied by members of his own team. And this. now the team is taking- I remember this happened. This is the uh, Richard Incognito situation. Um, yeah, that Richie Incognito situation is just, just really, really bad, really bad, man. Let's keep going. Y'all ready? Y'all with me? Is everybody on the same page? All right, let's go. King action. Overnight, the Miami Dolphins suspended starting guard Richie Incognito amidst allegations he may have harassed and even bullied teammate Jonathan Martin so badly that Martin left the team. Richie Incognito didn't play the rest of that season, and he sat out all of 2014. Of also, the Dolphins offensive line coach Jim Turner played a role in some of the- I was so fucking tired of hearing this shit. Like, oh, I'm like, come on, bro. Like, like, please. Just stop telling me, stop spamming that clip. Stop spamming that clip. Stop spamming that clip. Abuse. And he was. Yo, we have a policy. We don't talk about the Wayne mix that we just heard. Yo, G Dasher, thank you so much. We, as a community, we are not talking about that Wayne mix that we just heard. Fired shortly after the report's release. Mods, if this guy spammed that clip one more time, how, however many sec however many times he spammed that clip, multiply that by six and give him those times, please. Okay, now let's head back to the football side of things. Y'all need help, I'll get my camera. Again, they're a little torn. He's changed. He's got a line set up. Hester will take oh it all the way. In week seven and eight, there were four records set, and Calvin Johnson 
had 329 oh God, receiving kids. yards in a single game. Although this wasn't a record, it was definitely bro. worth mentioning. Nick Foles out of nowhere threw seven touchdowns in a game. It's wild because he started the year as a backup, and he went on to make the Pro Bowl in 2013. Week 11, at 9-0, the Chiefs played the 8-1 Broncos, and Denver prevailed. Zone for goal, it's caught by Gordon! Another one. I don't even want to talk about him. He's over 200 yards! This has never happened back-to-back -back in the history of pro football! For the all-time mark from 64, Matt Prater's catch! Buffalo, what are you doing? Got it away. Michael coming on a blitz. Play made. My boy Luke Kuechly. Thomas and it's Big Luke Kuechly, big guy. The reason he's winning because of this. Dre Kirkpatrick. I'll Dre take that made day. a play. Dre made a play. Yo, Deion Sanders on Dre Kirkpatrick. And Dre Kirkpatrick was not. He was not as good in the NFL as he was in college. In college, he was like that, but like, and in the NFL, bro, I just kept. Expecting to see him do something. <laughs> he was, he not really did that. Yo, it's crazy. Drake Kirkpatrick's son is going to be Alabama next year, I think. I, he had a kid early. His son going to be a fucking Bama. That's nuts. So in wrapping up the 2013 season, here's how every team finished compared to their preseason projections. Looking first at the NFC, the Seattle Seahawks reigned supreme, taking home the number one seed with the most dominant defense in the league. For the rest of the conference, the biggest overperformers were the Cardinals, Eagles, and Panthers. The Cardinals were expected to be really Whoa, bad, boy, but Cam. they surprised everybody and just barely missed the playoffs. Considering the Eagles had Vic dealing with injuries and only starting six games, what Chip Kelly did with Nick Foles was incredible. <coughs> Foles finished number one in passer rating, and they had the fourth best offense in the league. For the Panthers, you, Cam second. bounced back after a oh, down year in 2012. But the I'll, I'll play him right now. That's trolley with the 20 gift this my nigga. Oh my god, look at the sub, bro. The sub numbers ain't up late updating a while. We back over the big 15, man. We're gonna be consistent, so we're trying to get that 16. Take up with the five. Trolley. Look, look, watch the, the shit the troll. Look at this motherfucker, bro. Look at this motherfucker. Ten gifted. Another gift. Let's see what Cuddy said. Let me make sure I read his bit. Cuddy said, I want to make sure I read my dog. Oh, he, I read that. Nigga told me, shut up. My old PSN was Broncos 13-3. That season had me gloating. Get that Chip Kelly niggin off my screen. <laughs> Big Mike seven eight seven seven eight seven just resubscribed for two months. Oh, love the constant funny. most most ghetto streamer I've ever watched, Yo, and Mike, I love. So can't wait to see the day for the whole cell squad to it one M on everything. Oh my god, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cry so many tears that day on my life. She don't have to worry. I'll wipe it for her. Wink, wink. Hashtag booty home brown. Oh my god, it's always one, bro. Are you fat? Does D. Rose have good knees? Is TFM unemployed? Do Trey get a life to take shit last night? All of these questions have the same answer. Yes. What the fuck was the point On of that? On some inspirational stuff, play Homecoming King by Montana of 300. No. No, truly. Truly, no. Dasher 13 just subscribed. Please, no. Dad, Wayne is 2016 Peyton Manning. Is hard seeing a legend on the downside. Fucking Montana. Defense was the biggest sweetie change. They went from 18th to second in scoring defense. Keekley was named Defensive Player of the Year in his second season. Lilmo70 just resubscribed for the 22 Bulldog months. Gang. Thank you for the streams, helping me get through nursing school. Hey, big fucking W's, bro. Yo, hey, man. Good luck, gang. And Ron Rivera won Coach of the Year. 
Now, the biggest underperformers were the Falcons and Redskins. After reaching the NFC title the year before, injuries plagued the Falcons, including star wide receiver Julio Jones only playing in five games. For the Redskins, do RG3 it, was a shell of his 2012 self. The 2013 Redskins were also notable for having one of the worst special teams units in league history. Moving over to the AFC, the Peyton Manning-led Denver Broncos took the number one seed and were truly in a league of their own offensively. 37.9 points per game, which was more than 10 points a game above second place. Manning went on to win MVP with the greatest regular season stats in NFL history for a quarterback. For the biggest overperformers in the AFC, that would be the Chiefs. Alex Smith made his first Pro Bowl of his career after eight seasons with the Niners, and Andy Reid finished second in Coach of the Year voting. Now, for the underperformers, that would go to the Houston Texans. What's Absolutely wild was they started 2-0. Game number one saw Matt Schaub lead a 28-7 comeback win, the largest in Texans history. Then they had another comeback victory in week two, only to lose their last 14 games. Matt Schaub had gone from 2012 Pro Bowler to throwing a pick six in four consecutive games. An NFL record. The defense also woefully underperformed, and head coach Gary Kubiak was fired mid-season. The last thing I'll mention prior to the playoffs, this was the greatest scoring season for the league as a whole, with games averaging 46. Shut up, Mr. Glow. 6.8 points per game. This made it the highest average in NFL history. And also, here was the top 10 passers, rushers, and receivers, according to yards, in He deserved better. Mesh off shit the bed. 2013. Pretty crazy to see Josh Gordon leading the receivers, despite missing two games. The 2013-2014 playoffs kicked off with a bang. The first wildcard matchup was a record-setting showing between the Chiefs and Colts. The Chiefs jumped out to a 38-10 lead early in the second half, and somehow, someway, Andrew Luck led a staggering comeback to win 45-44. The next game also came down to the wire. The Eagles made a 13-point comeback and took the lead over the Saints with a Zach Ertz touchdown with less than five minutes to go. But after a horse collar penalty on the kickoff, the Saints didn't oh have to go God. too far to set up the game-winning kick, which they made. Surprise! See, listen, Eagles. It, look, that be my thing, bro. No bullshit. The Eagles. <laughs> the Eagles used to be like a fucking. They used to be a team that just did some stupid shit, like, and you feel like they're gonna get there and they don't get there. Now, luckily, y'all changed it though. Y'all finally got over that hump, but goddamn, it took y'all a long time, bro. This nigga got a horse collar. <laughs> and they got a horse collar and gave them niggas a field goal. Oh my God, bro. Surprisingly, the Bengals outgained the Chargers in yards, but they ended up losing by three scores thanks to four hey, turnovers up, and two failed fourth down attempts. And the final- Guapo, you, I don't know what that is because you don't even have Instagram, so how the fuck did you see that? You don't have nothing. I don't care. Wildcard matchup was a classic. The duel between Rodgers and Cap. The Texans have four wins in the playoffs all time. Again, you're talking about the youngest team in the league. Again. Again. For Nick went back and forth. In a tied ball game with five minutes to go, the Niners put together a 65 yard drive and kicked the game winning field goal. In the divisional round, Number one seed Seattle showed the Saints just how insane their defense was. They didn't give up any points until the fourth quarter, but despite a two touchdown lead late, the Saints scored, then recovered an onside kick after Golden Tate bobbled the ball. The Saints had a chance to tie things up, but after Colston caught this pass, 
he basically had two choices. Step out of bounds, what a bounce, or do this. The Seahawks won. <laughs> Are you fucking insane? <laughs> Are you fucking insane? This nigga threw a bitch forward. Oh my god. No way, nigga. After that amazing comeback in the wild card, the Colts were dominated by the Patriots. Four interceptions were forced, they had 234 rushing oh yards and six God, rushing bro. touchdowns in their 43-22. to What was Andre doing again? Not throwing the ball forward. <laughs> Not throwing the ball forward, brother. Lizard. Victory. After falling behind early, the Niners defense stifled Cam Newton the rest of the game. Fuck. They sacked him four times and they had two interceptions, which helped lead the Niners to scoring 17 unanswered and punching their Cam. ticket to face Seattle in the NFC Championship. And for the last divisional matchup, the Broncos offense wasn't as spectacular as people thought, but they did jump out to a 17-0 lead, mostly highlighted by their defense. With a 17-point lead late, oh, the, the Broncos, Broncos held offense on wasn't for spectacular. The Who would Conference guessed? Championship week. This really felt like we had the best four teams in football left. The NFC matchup had the most dominant defenses, and the AFC had the top two quarterbacks in the league. The first game played was the AFC title match. Crazy enough, this was the first time in eight years that the Patriots played on the road in the playoffs. For the second straight game, it was Denver's defense who pulled out all the stops. Who would have guessed? Also, their offense put up over 500 yards and jumped right, out to mind. a 20-point lead in the fourth quarter. This was enough to hold off Tom Brady, and this meant that Manning's second year in Denver was now featuring him in the Super Bowl. This made him the third quarterback ever to start in a Super Bowl for two different teams. In the NFC title game, there was so much tension between these two division rivals before kickoff that they literally had a line of officials blocking them from interacting with each other before the game. From the opening play, it was big moment after big moment. From crazy runs by Kaepernick to Russell Wilson bombs. And defensively, this game was truly magnificent. Ultimately, it came down to one play with less than 30 seconds to go. And Richard Sherman made the play of his career. Broken up, oh my up. God. It's the Crabtree sorry ass receiver. Here. Post game, Richard Sherman went on to have his famous rant. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're gonna get. Yeah. Don't you Damn. ever talk about me? Damn. As we welcome you back to the kickoff of Super Bowl 48. This was Where's exactly the, the kind of matchup you, you hoped for as an NFL fan. Live, you boy. A record-setting offense versus a record-setting defense. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? We were about to find out. It's snapped over the head of Peyton Manning. A flag is down, and the ball's out of the back of the end zone. In truly shocking fashion, one of the best offenses most of us had ever seen did the unthinkable. And from that moment, they were completely out of rhythm. On the opposite sideline, the already confident Seahawks had smelt blood and absolutely punished the Broncos in every way. In one of the largest blowouts in Super Bowl history, oh my God! The Legion of Boom had taken over the NFL. W video though. The it nail took us two hours to finish. In the coffin was the kickoff to begin the second half. Percy Harvin to this point had been pretty much forgotten about. This poor dude had injured his hip in the off season, which required surgery, and he missed all but one regular season game. He came back for the playoffs, but to this point, hadn't done much of anything. Then, he did this against his former team, the Vikings, and they just pop it up. Good kick by Prater on top, right. it's Harvin, but now he takes off, and Percy Harvin gets free. Percy Harvin, inside the 30, he's gonna go. Touchdown, Seattle. Let me tell you what, this fucking guy has one of the best outro songs, and like, he has, he has one of the best send-offs on YouTube right now. He knows how to end a fucking video. This motherfucker know how to end a video. Man, bro. W video, bro. W fucking video. Who recommended, whoever recommended this? Big W, big W. Um, 
Percy was the greatest player that never was. No, I don't want to say that never was. I don't want to say that never was. Because there's some there, there's a lot of shit. Percy had his moments in the NFL. Like, nigga, him and him and um and Minnesota was fire. I get that you were sub and you ignored where? Exy, bro. Thank you so much for the big motherfucking gifted subs. Appreciate you, my nigga. Real big motherfucking gifted, bro. I appreciate you, gang. All right. What is that?